Is it going, Naylor? Right. Hey, what's up, everybody? <laughs> Welcome back <laughs> to the Green Industry Podcast. Oh. I started the episode without hitting record, and Naylor comes over and looks at the soundboard and realizes triple zeros is not good. But uh, we're having a blast here. I am with Charles from Stepping Stone right across the street in Short Pump, yep. uh, Virginia, which is a stunningly uh, beautiful area. I stayed there on last summer tour. And they had the Whole Foods there and that, like, outdoor shopping. Yeah, I'm right there. Center. It was a, just a, the area was really, really nice. So Awesome. Well, Charles, as I eat, in broadcasting school, they taught us not to eat when you're on air. But <laughs> I'm I'm starving. I'm going to eat some chips and salsa. Um, shout out to Naylor's family. His wife just brought his snacks. We're going to grill out on the Weber. Uh, Melvin's here. Him and Naylor are, are probably going to get podcasting here, and we're just going to um, have a great time. So I really look forward to hearing your story. I just heard you off here. So you have nine on your staff now, and that's kind of like a full team. So you guys have a good system going. So tell us a little bit about Stepping Stone. Yeah. Um, Charles Nelson, Stepping Stone Landscaping. We started, uh, five years ago. So, uh, it was a partner and I, uh, we started 50, 50, just him and I, the first year, second year we had a helper. And that's when he kind of gave me his six month notice saying, Hey, this wasn't for me, you know, He's a good friend of mine, still is, but uh, just didn't work out. And luckily, you know, I had plenty of time with them. And then come that November, we hired who is now my go-to guy. I found that I found that right-hand man. How did you guys do the divorce or the, the, the partnership breakup? How did you handle that? And that's probably for the better in the long run. You look back. Yeah, no, but absolutely. How did that go? We, you know, everything was kind of 50-50. We basically started off with a push mower. I had a pickup truck. He put in $5,000 that we used to buy our first you know, trailer from Lowe's, single axle, you know, five by 10. And I think we got a, you know, a residential zero turn from there as well. Um, so we use that as a core money. And, and then um, at the end of it, when everything was said and done, once he gave me the kind of notice, we basically said, okay, let's start pricing out our assets. And we didn't really do anything customer wise, as far as what they were valued at. Um, we just did assets. And so moving forward, come November 1st, we broke down, okay, we have this many mowers, trailers, all that kind of stuff and divided it out. Gave him a sum. We did. We settled on once tax season the next year. Once we settled taxes, we would have a final number, and then I paid him two hundred and fifty dollars a month for I think like I don't know how many months. A lot of months. Okay. <laughs> but, yeah. So in hindsight, you're glad you're the owner now. Yeah. All all in your name. So you had um, th- then year two. It sounds like you started beefing up uh, the staff a little bit. Were you guys doing lawn mow- mowing or uh, installations? Starting off basically any, a little bit of everything, uh, just like everyone else, but. Definitely smaller stuff, no heavy machinery, and still don't. Um, yeah, you come year three, so 2019 is when we really kicked into gear. Had four guys um, and just stepped it up. So still residential primarily, mowing, maintenance, uh, mulching, hedge trimming, all that kind of stuff. And here we are you know, today doing the exact same stuff, just at a lot more volume, if you will. Okay. Uh, you got nine guys, Charles, so break down what's each person's um, role on, on the team. and Put the mic just a little bit closer. There you go. All right. Um, yeah, nine guys. So we've got LM1, so that's Nathan, Jacob, and John. They uh, primarily lawn maintenance. They've got the truck and trailer, do a lot of the bigger properties, Suburbans, more like this size. Um, then we have LM2, which is the ramp rack setup. So new to us this hey. year. Yeah, thanks to Naylor. Um, he was the one who recommended it. So they have they do a lot of our city properties. They have a 36-inch mower and two push mowers. They just knock out two-man team, go out and knock out a lot of the little stuff. And then we have our special projects. So that's headed up by Ryan, who's my right-hand man. He does a lot of running around for me. So he'll supervise them, but then he'll run out and go treat properties, uh, go check in on other properties, go buy stuff, whatever else. And then he has a three-man crew that does all the mulch installations that – hedge trimming, special project stuff. Um, and that is, uh, sorry, uh, Scotty, Gabe, and, um, oh gosh, last one, Brandon. Okay. <laughs> we just had a couple of new hires, so finally got fully staffed. Yeah, the labor crisis ain't no joke, folks. Everywhere yeah. I go, they're asking me, w- w- what's the answer? I was like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I was just at Starbucks, the hotel I stayed at. I had to check out at 11, and, and Naylor was out there working, so I couldn't come here till 3, so... I was at Starbucks for four hours, and they were interviewing people at the table right next to me. And I'm sitting there like the 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 folks that they were interviewing were so unprofessional. And I was like, and it sounded like they got the job because I was like, what in the world? Like if if I had uh, you know a a son one day and, and he went to a job interview and he was just sitting there just like nonchalant. I mean, you you at least you know um put forth a professional presentation, and so. 
uh, I know that's air conditioning, you know, making coffee. And that's actually a pretty good job. But um, we're out here in the elements, and to get somebody to show up every single morning to go and work outside, whether it's hot, whether it's cold, whether it's raining a little bit, it's very difficult. So what have you found uh, in regards to the labor crisis, Charles? I put four, you know, I remember listening to a, a YouTube video years ago just saying hey, the best way to tackle a labor problem is number one, if it's your number one problem, you should be spending the most time focusing on it. So mm. that's what I had to do. Um, I spent days and days, 24 hours plus, you know, just going through old resumes from three, four years ago. I'd call people who lived in New Mexico mm. now and just say, who are you? Um, because the people don't understand is last year you could put a job application out there and get 30 applicants for free. You know, you just put a job application on Facebook, whatever it is to post it. This year you spend a hundred bucks a day and I get two applicants mm-hmm. that aren't even worth a phone call, but I still have to call them. And you get those people at Starbucks, they call, like, they show up, they're not prepared. Um, I had one guy literally almost pretty much fall asleep on the interview table. Um, he, I, I said, excuse me, you know, are you okay? And he said, oh, could you repeat the question? <laughs> <laughs> Just, you know, this is what I was dealing with. Yeah. And, but I would still, I still had to try. Still had to call everyone, you know, maybe a diamond in a rough. I uh, just kept doing it and doing it and doing it until finally we were able to, you know, breathe and uh, land some guys. So, Okay. Now, how does the sales process go at, at your business? How, how are you lining up the work? Is, is that something that you're doing or do you have somebody that, that goes out and sells the work? I am the salesman for sure. Okay. Um, I do have an assistant as well, so she uh, she handles a lot of the email stuff for me. Any new leads, she'll set up estimates for me to do, which has been a huge help for me because the emails are where it would kill me. Okay. I love talking. I love the one-on-one, um, but the emails and just those kind of follow-ups, it's great to have somebody. Yeah, you, you, can, you can keep going. Okay. Uh, the And then, so, yeah, as far as the sales go, my, my whole sales process is I – for our t- Hold on one second. Sorry. Let me ask. This this is the hotel I'm staying at tonight. Let's see here. Hello? Hi, is this Mr. Jameson? Yes. Hi, this is Bailey from the Hampton Inn in Danville, Virginia. Hey, Bailey. I was just calling as a courtesy because I have you down for arrival this evening with departure tomorrow, and I just wanted to confirm you'd still be coming. Yep, I'll be there pretty late. I probably won't get in town till 10, 11 p.m., but I'll, I'll be there. Perfect. We will see you then, Mr. Jameson. All right, thanks, Bailey. Bye. All right. Sorry about that. <laughs> Life on the road. I don't have an assistant yet. So I, I got to hire, uh, talk about the labor crisis. I need like an assistant to take care of all this stuff for me. That's, yeah, for sure. Mr. Producer doesn't do that for you? Well, he, he produces a show and he does a phenomenal job at it. Uh, but in regards to all the administration things, you know, the hotels, are, that's actually pretty pleasant. Normally they don't call you. So nice folks down there. Five star review coming right there. Danville, yes. Yeah. So uh, sales is so important. So the, they reach out to you uh, via email. Tell me a little bit more why you don't like email. What were you saying with that? It's, it slows me down. So okay. obviously, you know, honestly, I am running thin with supervising nine guys. is kind of like at my peak. When I was in school, um, I did, you know, management classes, and they basically told me, you know, six, seven to nine guys, you're, you should be starting to delegate and have mm-hmm. people – you can only have too many people directly re- re- uh, report to you. Um, so I'm getting phone calls all the time from my guys, from customers, and all that stuff. So that's right now that's where I'm at. So emails, that's at night. It's in the middle of the night. Early mornings is when I get a chance to sit down in front of the computer and respond. So it's helpful that she's able to do that or at least part of it. Mm-hmm. Um, and back to the sales process for me, when I go to a new customer's house, I have a pretty simple business model. It's I want to seal the deal right now, mm-hmm. and if I don't, then you're gonna, you know, I will follow up. Let with me you. let me back it up, Charles. Before yeah. you get to the pro- customer's property to go ahead and seal the deal, how did you get to that point? Are, are the, kind of give me a little bit of the marketing. How, how are they coming into your business? How are you vetting them? How, how did you even get to that point right there? So we do. So most of our our uh, clients will contact us one or two ways: email or through our website, mm-hmm. just a direct email or a phone call. Um, I'm the one that handles the phone call, so I can vet you right there. If you're in our service area, what you're looking to have done. If it's anything that involves any kind of heavy heavy equipment, a skid steer, mini skid steer, anything like that, sorry. Here's my list of people that I recommend you to. So you, you vet that automatically. That's a that's a pass on to a, another company. And then are you answering your phone? They're, they're, the number they're calling for your right business yep. is going to you, and you're trying to have a 100% answer rate? Yes. Okay. I answer my phone 
all the time, and it's something that I I just always answer the phone. Well, what's your uh, introduction? This is Stepping Stone Landscaping. This is Charles. How can I help you? Perfect. Um, and if I don't answer the call, I have to respond back, and I'm just constantly answering phone calls and, and whatnot. But the idea for me is to be polite and respectful and just get to the property if I'm able to. If it's a reoccurring maintenance customer within our zip codes, I do everything off zip codes. Okay. So if you're – Codes or code? Code or code. So we have okay. multiple zip codes. Um, and Hold on one second. Charles, we may have a heating issue. No, no. Let's see what's going on here. No, we're still going. All right. <laughs> Guys, it's a 102-degree re- re- real feel, and I got a message on my roadcaster, but we're going to just make sure it's staying in the shade. We're still live, Charles. Right. <laughs> Charles is uh, watching behind the scenes. When you listen, it's, a, it's more polished than when you're actually behind the scenes, but it's, it's real life, bro. All right. Mr. Producer is worth every penny. Oh, he, he, he is worth <laughs> <laughs> It's a lot of pennies, but he's worth That's it. That's right. Um, yeah, so, you know, when, we'll vet you. If you're not in our zip code, so if, let's say it comes through email, it comes through our website, we ask some very specific questions. What are you looking to have done? If it's an other, most of the time we're going to pass you along. We okay. have a great list of people that we can recommend you to. Um, we, we primarily do a, just a few things. Weekly or bi-weekly mowing, gardening, so we do that while we're already there mowing. Uh, we call those add-ons, Lawn Care Plus. Uh, then we do hedge trimming, mulchings. We do offer aeration over seeding, and we do leaf removal. Got it. Anything besides that, we're you know we don't really want to talk to you. It's not that it's not that we won't direct you. You're your, staying in your lane. Yeah, staying in our lane. So, um, and I find it to be extremely helpful to have a list of recommendations for people. Like just nail it. You know, if you're not in our zip code, I need to know lawn care professionals. So I'll call people just to say, hey, you know, what's going on? I have electric fence guy. I have every every kind of guy you need. You come to me because when you're starting to get into the hundreds of customers that are calling you all the time, they want your recommendation because they trust you. You're on your property more than any other service industry. Um, they want your recommendation. You got to have someone that you can rely and point in that direction. Sounds good. Well, we're going to hear more with Stepping Stone Landscape from Short Pump, Virginia, uh, here in just a moment as the summer road tour rolls on from Midlothian, Virginia. All right, guys, we're back with Charles and Naylor's backyard. What do you think about this waterfront property, Charles? It's great. I didn't, yeah. you know, I, I've heard the jokes, but I mean, it's a serious, it's a pond. You've got a lake here. Yeah, it's a lake or a pond? Uh, I'll say lake. Okay. We're lake house. We're do, lake. Not wanna, do not want to defend the, the, the natives. Last night I was in Columbia, South Carolina at um, Alex Kirby's parents' lake house. It was Lake Murray. It was massive. That's like a mile and a half really? uh, just, just to get across it. Well, the most frequently asked question that I probably get here on the podcast, I get a lot of them, but I would say it, it deals with pricing. You know, a lot of folks want to know how other uh, business owners are calculating uh, their price, how they're analyzing, reviewing, are, are those prices profitable? And I've heard about every different formula and way guys um, discover the price. So Charles shared with us, that how he gets the phone call, he answers it, he vets it. If it's a good customer that's in his wheelhouse, he's Johnny on the spot and he's out there. So now take us when you arrive at the property, you want to seal the deal. How do you seal the deal so you actually get it at a, at a profitable rate? I try, to talk, I try to let the customer talk as much as they possibly can. I give them a basic spiel when I get there of who I am, small company, you know, this and that, do a lot of work in your area, whether we do or not, um, in their neighborhood. But, uh, then I go into listening to what they need and talk about our basic pricing scale. So we give a fixed price for mowing. So either it's a weekly price or a bi-weekly price. Um, we give, that includes mowing, edging, weed eating, and blowing, right? Anything. What's we, kind of a, the average range for, for I, I saw the commercial side of short pump, but I didn't actually see like neighborhoods and yards. What's kind of the average in short pump for a, 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 mow, a regular weekly mow like that? $50. Okay. Yeah, I would say $50 is a good average rate. Okay. Um, and so we we do we do offer and, that, by, and you're banging that out in less than an hour. We sh, we want to be done with a fifty dollar. So our man hour rate is about sixty dollars a man hour. Dollar a minute. Yeah. So we exactly. 50, so if we have a three man minutes. crew, we should be done in twenty minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then hopefully we have more properties on that same street. Yeah. Um, exactly. And all that's yeah, tracked. And, and that's about average. I mean, I've traveled 
literally United States of America and sixty dollars per man hour. If you're just getting started, we have so many guys that don't have nine employees and they're just getting started. How much should I charge, Paul? That's a pretty good rule of thumb. So one dollar per minute. So he has three it's easy. Yeah. He has three employees and it's a twenty minute property. Three times twenty is sixty. You know, you're, you're you're hitting your you're hitting your target. If you start getting under that, once your overhead starts um, growing, it, it, you could be sinking real fast. So, yeah, uh, back, back back to you, Charles. No, so you're you're completely right. And um, I was just listening to a podcast with you, Dr. Frank, talking about yeah. how you did that. Um, trying to get you know educated on my way over here. Okay. <laughs> so, anyways, we same exact thing. I'm big about knowing my number, so we use Service Autopilot. Nailer, oh, great. Yeah. got me into them. And uh, it's great because they know exactly how many people are yep. on the property, does the math for you. I'm sure all the other ones do the same thing. And um, I, just, I am big about tracking that. And then I, at the end of the year, just like you, I believe, send, I look at those numbers and I say, okay, are we above that rate? Simple rate increase letter goes out to them and says, hey, this is what we need going off of our new rate because next year we're not going to be at $60 an hour. We're going to be somewhere a little higher. If hopefully a lot higher. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, you, you, you got to stay on top of it. You can't just let it be stagnant for too long. Okay. And then the next question on pricing would be billing. What have you found to be the best for the customer, the best for your cash flow? How do you do your billing? Cash flow is tough. Uh, I hate cash flow. Um, it takes until about June for us to get caught up on cash flow. The billing is done monthly for reoccurring customers. So if you're a reoccurring mowing customer, we have about 140 um, weekly accounts. So that means anything we do for you during the month gets billed to you on the 1st and we charge your card on the 7th. Um, so that gives you, because it fluctuates, it's not a fixed price service agreement. I like them to see the invoice on the 1st of the month and that gives them seven days for them to say, hey, what's this? Why is my bill $100 more? Well, it was a five mo uh, month. So August 1's coming up. Will the bill go out on August 1 for the work done in July or the work that's going to be done in August? It's not prepaid, so it's the work done in July. Okay, so you guys are spotting them four or five exactly. maintenances, billing at the end of the month, well, technically the first day of the next month, and then trying to collect your payment by the 7th. Yep. Well, we collect the, the, we charge the card on the 7th for the— Oh, so you have card on file through Service Autopilot. We do. So the— not, It's not required, but we're at about 50% right now. So. Okay, so so the the it's more of a notification on the first that your card will be charged this amount on Correct. the seventh. Yep. Okay, I'm I'm tracking. Yeah. No, it's it's been huge for us because I mean, gosh, I remember sitting there with a pen and paper, tallying up how many times we were there for the month. Did we trim her hedges on the seventh of the you know whatever day? All that stuff is just done. It in all, service, in service autopilot calculates okay. it, and then I just click send at the end of the month. So. Uh, I what I do is I make sure the numbers for the guys working. To me, that's the most important thing is to how long it took us. So, okay. And then you only have fifty percent with the card on file. How are you getting paid from the other fifty percent? You get a um, so you'll get your email on the first. You have fifteen days to pay. You get a reminder on the tenth, and then on the sixteenth, you get an invoice with a late fee of five percent added on. And then after thirty days of that, which I'd never get to. Okay. We, we just haven't had a problem with it. Um, I had one customer one time that was three months late and, uh, yeah, that's been my biggest issue. Uh, so did you tell him to take a hike? I, I did. Uh, okay. you know, once you get to a certain point, it's just like, Hey, I need your card on file moving forward. And if they don't understand that, then yeah, I, I know with 140 customers, it's kind of like a big ship. You just kind of slow. If you're going to make a, um, change in the business policies, you got to do it so carefully and slowly. If you were just starting out, Charles, like, from di- you know, just starting your company in the spring of 2022, how would you set up billing uh, from from fresh? I would I would honestly look at billing weekly because um, cash flow. You don't the bigger you get, the more cash flow becomes a problem. And when you're when you're writing a check, you know my payroll a week is over six thousand dollars. And you pay those guys a weekly or bi-weekly? I pay weekly. Okay, and so that's a, six grand every week. Every week you gotta that you gotta, I gotta have. Yeah, I have to I have to front. Because I don't get paid for the work. So April is always the worst month because they're doing all these lawns in April. And I'm paying them for all that work, but I don't even see a dime of that until May 1st. So that's when cash flow gets Best real case scenario, May, 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 that's 7th, right. May 7th, May 15th. May, you're correct, yeah. yeah. So um, that's when cash flow gets tight and then finally you get, you, know, you get caught up with it. How do you do your billing on those, you call it gardening or enhancements, when you're, when you're doing the mulch job? Yeah. Uh, from how I'm hearing you explain your business, that's not included in that $50 cut. Uh, so how are you um, charging that? 
So currently, we, you know, so if you have a mulching, let's say you just want your house mulched, a lot of our customers will just tell us, hey, put me on the schedule. Okay. Um, we'll take care of the pricing, whatever else. And they just, they just, they've worked with us long enough. Um, but for new customers, I'll go out and I'll do an estimate. We agree on the price. Uh, traditionally, we come out two weeks prior. We treat the beds. Okay. So we'll spray all the weeds. Anything Glyphosate. Like that. Exactly. Um, and then we'll come in. That keeps the price down for them. If we get mm -hmm. a pull, then, oh, you geez. know. Yeah. So then we'll come in, we'll do the work, and then I have a reminder that evening to contact the customer, make sure they're happy with everything, and then I send them an invoice the next morning for the bill. Okay. And what's the average uh, you all charging per yard installed here in, in short pump? $105 a yard. Okay. That's good. Yeah. That's, that's pretty good. <laughs> and was, that's just the mulching part. So we do that with a pre-treatment. If I have to go out, that's where Ryan will come into play myself. You know, that's okay. a separate charge for me to actually go out and do that. If you don't want us to do that or you want us to do some hedging and other, you know, it's spring, spring cleanups, that's yeah. when you get the hourly rate. Okay. Charles, what's next for Stepping Stone Landscape and where you want to take this thing as you go into the 2022 season and beyond? Definitely want to continue to grow. I like my business model of the maintenance. So for me, I think that I can support three mowing crews with one enhancement crew. So those, and then just continue that model and duplicate it. I promise my guys to grow and give them opportunities. I don't want my guys to be stuck behind the mower for the rest of their lives. Right. I want them to learn. And I also want other companies to take them because they are providing them with bigger opportunities. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to grow as, you know, at a good rate where I'm not getting too ahead of myself. Um, I ask my guys every quarterly review I do with them. You know, I always ask, where do you see yourself in the company? Where do you see the company? Where would you like the company to go? And uh, right now, this our last batch of quarter reviews was on June thirtieth, and uh, everyone agreed they want to shop. So okay. that's in the that's in the works. Right now, we're running what? up a storage facility. Okay, so we have st four uh, ten by twenty storage units, and we have four parking spots that our trucks and trailers stay. In. What kind of trucks and trailers do you have? So we have the uh, we have a two thousand sixteen um, F one fifty you know single cab long bed for the ramp rack. Then we have an F two fifty that can pull the dump trailer, and we also have another uh, just a dual axle utility trailer and then we have another f-150 that pulls the utility trailer for the other mowing crew um so yeah and then in the morning these guys are are these guys meeting at the storage unit or our morning meeting starts at 7 30 every morning at, start, the, storage at unit. the storage unit where do they park their cars when you get the equipment and, and head out so so two of my guys actually tr take the trucks home two trucks home okay um so there's two open parking spots right there three of them ride together one of them takes the bus. I mean, there's a lot of different, and we can fit two cars in a parking spot. So everyone fits there. The issue is making sure you're on the right crew, which is assigned to that parking spot, because they don't want to get back before the other crew's done. That and, makes sense. Yeah, you're, you're in their parking spot. So try to make sure that stays. But uh, yes, meeting starts at 730. We go over the route, talk about safety, all that kind of stuff. So you're there 100% yeah, by 730. I say that, and then here I am. I didn't show up today. <laughs> but yes, I we, would say. We, we, this is a unique day. Yeah. So, yeah, 99% of the time I'm there. My daughter is usually there with me because i got to take her to daycare right afterwards. Okay. Um, so we are. We start the day. Usually we're out the doors by 740. We're on the first property no later than 8, getting rolling. Okay. Charles, what's the craziest lawn care story uh, that, that you've experienced in your four- or five-year career here? Jeez, oh, I didn't prepare for this one. Um, best story you got. Best story. So I, it wasn't me. It was one of my guys. Um, we had a property where the – lock on the gate was on the inside of the gate in the backyard and so he, we would have to jump the fence and this was a privacy fence six feet tall now that i'm a little bigger i realize okay you know workman's comp issues i don't want to deal with someone jumping fences or whatever so he would do that unlock the gate well he goes jumps over the fence goes in the backyard turns right around big smile on his face there's a woman sunbathing uh -huh. um with a bikini on or nothing? Nothing. <laughs> so he just has this biggest smile and says, nope, we got to go. And, uh, yeah, so that was that was <laughs> it. And she, so the husband of that, we took, oh, care of oh. now, <laughs> we took care of eight of his properties. He had a, oh. a few commercial properties and all that stuff. And, um, yeah, we uh, – it was awkward. There was awkward uh, tension there afterwards. So I don't know what to say. I mean – Did know, he fire y'all? No, or? no, no. We actually let go of him a while – because it's, so, it's one of those things. You take, oh, eight properties, awesome. But if two of them are outside your service area, yeah. it's not worth it. It's not worth it at all. So, um, no, Naked it, lady. Yeah, exactly. So hopefully, I'm sure some of you guys would want to see it. But uh, <laughs> it slowed down our day. We had to go back there later. <laughs> so. Awesome. Well, Charles, how can people connect with you and Stepping Stone? Yeah, so we're on Instagram. at Stepping Stone VA. Um, and uh, I, I pretty much, I try to 
maintain a presence on there. I'm always following people. I don't post as much as I should, but I do enjoy looking at what everyone else is doing. Are you going to be coming to the GIE Expo in October? I've never been. Uh, my wife, for my birthday a couple couple days ago, she said that she would uh, entertain the idea of me going, but uh, I have not used any any codes to get tickets yet, so I probably should get on that if I'm going to do it. Yeah, promo code Paul. <laughs> Save you 50% off. There you go. So we really appreciate Charles coming out today. He's going to hop on Naylor's uh, podcast, and uh, we had some swirly weather. We had a hurricane yesterday, yeah. and I know that threw everyone off uh, that works here in the – a greater Richmond, Virginia area. So I appreciate you uh, coming out and uh, sharing about your business with us. All right. Thanks, Paul. Thanks for having me on. And thank you. Uh, thank you for the gift. Of course. Let's open it up. All right. Let's do it. He bought me a, uh, he brought me a gift. So we'll find out what's in here. Stepping Stone Landscaping. Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> thank you. My favorite. I, well, I see you always at the coffee shop, so I figured you need something to help you. Yeah. He says, it was great meeting you. Here's a little something to keep you going on the summer tour. Thanks for all you do for the industry. Charles Nelson. So thank you for uh, coming out and for the Duncan. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you.